Hello, everyone. You're listening to China Blue on WUSB 90.1 FM. Today, we'll be talking about the undergraduate student government at Stony Brook University. Uh, let's start off with some introductions. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm the vice president at China Blue, and I'm a senior studying biology. Hi, I'm Jennifer. I'm the president of China Blue, and I'm a junior majoring in health science. Hi, I'm Nancy. I'm the event coordinator of China Blue. I'm a senior. I'm studying economics and business. Hello everyone, my name is Hanley Spencer. I'm the current USG president and I'm studying political science and I'm a senior. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Kevin Mayen. I'm currently the USG treasurer. I'm studying computer engineering and mathematics. I'm currently a senior. And I'm Nassim Malik. I'm the VP of clubs and orgs. I'm a senior and I'm a health science major. Hey, great, I'm so glad you guys could all come here today. Um, so do you guys mind explaining to our listeners a little bit about what USG is and like what it does for the university? Yeah, so um, pretty much the USG is the undergraduate student government. It kind of represents the, um, the student government body for undergraduate students at um, Stony Brook University. And we do a lot of different things, but um, the majority on what we kind of focus on is um, kind of proctoring the student activity fee that uh, we collect every year and budgeting in that out to um, provide either student life events, uh, club budgets, or putting on events. And we pretty much just take students' concerns and bring it to the administration. Do any of you guys want to uh, share about like why you guys ran for your position in USG? Probably you go first. All right, yeah. So I kind of uh, ran for USG president because um, in my freshman to sophomore year, um, I was freshman class senator and sophomore class senator. And from the moment I kind of uh, came into the organization freshman year, I just understood that um, the impact that USG can really have and that it is truly a, an amazing organization on campus. And I felt like I was the best person to um, you know, kind of continue on this legacy for, uh, during my senior year and my term in office. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess I'll go second. Uh, <laughs> I ran in sophomore year for senator, CEAS senator, because Huntley told me to, actually. Um, and I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. But after a, like half a year doing that, um, I ran again as senator. And then when Adrian was graduating, I saw that kind of the position of treasurer was gonna be vacant. And you, you just need like someone who's very detail oriented and like someone willing to do the job. And I didn't really see anyone else kind of wanting to do it. And Huntley expressed to me pretty early on that he was gonna run for president and that he wanted me as his treasurer. So I just ran for treasurer. That's it, that's the rest of <laughs> the story is, ends there. Nassim? About you? Um, I guess for me, um, when I first came to Stony Brook being a commuter, I would say making friends was really hard for me and being involved in campus was hard, especially since most of my classes had like 500 people, the 600 people in them. So I decided to join um, USG through being on the elections board in my freshman year. And I really enjoyed it because I was able to meet other students of various years from different backgrounds and different involvements. Um, and then I became a senator in my junior year representing the Commuter Student Association. And like some of my best moments and best memories from college will definitely be like going to USG events and helping other senators and EC members planning those events and just like hanging out in the office and doing random things. So um, for my position specifically, the VP of clubs and orgs, I mainly wanted to run for this position because not only do I get to bond with the people who are in USG, but I also get to bond with other student leaders on campus, um, especially since I had like prior experience um, being a part of other clubs on campus. And I think it was another way for me to connect with students on campus um, and various that come from like various different backgrounds and um, have different hobbies and interests. 
was a great answer. I definitely feel like I relate to all of the things you said there. Um, getting involved on campus has been like a great way for I think all of uh, the China Blue members to like meet new people and make friends. Um, I think I could say the same for like a lot of the other people in other organizations as well. So definitely getting involved in these orgs is, is great, you know. Um, I have a so, question. Can I ask? Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, USC, you guys, right? So you guys talked about, you guys, um, the way that you explain it feels like you guys have been part of USC for a long time, like not just for one year, not right now. So I know that when you run, you do have um, like a platform that you guys do speak about. So just for each of you guys, what are some things that you guys um, really wanted to do and have you guys, how have you guys been able to implement that into USC and Stony Brook University? Well, I'm, I'll take that question first since my answer might be the shortest. Um, a lot of the things I ran on, um, specifically before I got the position, you know, it was very hopeful thinking that, you know, it would be in a semi-normal looking uh, setting so I'd be able to, you know, have joint SUNY events I wanted to, um, to start looking into whether we could have the um, West meets East festival idea that I kind of ran on. And COVID kind of came in and said, you know, you got to hold your breaks. Not this year, maybe, maybe next one. So um, a lot of the things that I wanted to do having gone implemented, but However, however, comma, I have been able to take the focus away less from my, my planning initiatives and more on my um, implementation initiatives. So um, we have gotten a new position in um, USG. Um, we are working very hard to, you know, brainstorm ideas and ways that commencement for our seniors can, you know, be in person since I was kind of the most requested uh, requested item that students kind of gave feedback on. So that's some of the stuff that I've done. Kevin and Nassim have had more uh, concrete uh, initiatives that they've been able to complete. Yeah, um, do you want us to talk about like when we were senators too, or just- Sure, like, anything that you've been able to accomplish while you've been in USC. Yeah, so when I first ran, um, I didn't really know like the scope of what we could do. So I ran on VIP, like increasing VIP positions, which is like vertically integrated programs. It's like a research opportunities for College of Engineering and Applied Sciences students. Yeah, um, that kind of didn't work out. It really wasn't like the area that USC could affect. Um, so then I ran again the next year. And that time I was more focused on kind of improving USG internally. Um, so I worked on internal communications within USG. And I think we did a lot just to streamline like the process, how everyone talks to each other. Um, like we just moved different apps, um, got everyone on the same Google Drive, like kind of basic stuff that should have been done, but wasn't. Um, and then when I ran for treasurer and in my position now, um, I ran on increasing funding to smaller clubs, which I'm currently doing now after spring budget weekend finished. Um, I wanted to change spring budget weekend so that we would like more equitably review the clubs. So across the different um, like kind of categories of clubs, because um, I just don't think it makes sense when you're looking at a sports club and looking at like, I don't know, say an academic or honor society type of club, like their operational expenses are just aren't going to be the same. It's not going to be close. Um, so like looking at clubs across categories instead of across just the whole board, um, I think makes more sense and it's more uh, kind of fair to the clubs. Besides that, I want to improve the menstrual hygiene program. I'm currently working with Ant Flow to get a bunch of different dispensers in like bathrooms all around campus. Um, oh, and the USG Club Pantry, I'm working on that. Um, that's just kind of like a storage space for clubs to share and share resources. Um, hopefully it'll get rid of a lot of the excess waste with clubs and maybe we could cut down on some spending for like event supplies. Um, and then also I made two new grants this year for sustainable events. And um, so that's, that's like cutting down plastic costs, um, reducing trash, food waste, all that. 
Um, and then there's also the COVID materials grant, which just gives clubs a way of buying like I don't know, hand sanitizer, gloves, stuff like that, um, without cutting too much into their budget. Um, so something, I think the biggest thing that I ran on this year was um, making it easier for clubs to transition during this time, especially since we're on an online format. And I really wanted to be a resources for the clubs and organizations to make it easier for them to still engage with their club members and students on an online and virtual setting. So something that I've done besides like um, always being open to meeting with clubs and having um, just like conversations with them is actually hosting virtual workshops to kind of help them with applying for budgets. And also um, I'm planning on hosting one for tutorials for um, how to use campus. After the executive council, you have the uh, USG Senate and uh, the Senate is the most like proportionally, um, how would it, it's the most proportional representation to the student body, to the undergraduate student body. And, you know, they handle a various amount of different issues, whether it's voting on uh, recognizing clubs, uh, voting on club budgets. Yeah, or, they're kind of like the legislative branch. They just yeah. approve everything that the executive branch does. And they're kind of there just to represent students. There's 25 senators. Two of them are kind of delegated from RHA and CSA. And everyone else has just voted in. Yep. And along with that body, um, we have separate agencies within USC, like SAB, who is um, in charge of our um, big programming for USC and most of our student programming for USG. We have the election board, which um, kind of monitors club elections, make sure that their constitution is approvable and kind of, you know, be the, they're the moderators for any type of USG election or special election. And um, that's, that's kind of the structure. Um, we can get into the specifics of what each role does, or, you know, maybe, uh, maybe just using the three positions out of here would be easiest, but some, some things that I do as a president is I'm in a lot of meetings with administrators on um, ver a various amount of different topics, whether it's university Senate executive committee where I'm a voting member and that deals mostly with the faculty and administration, faculty and staff administration, um, at Stony Brook, and that's kind of like their legislative body. Um, I'm in a lot of uh, committees uh, looking at different issues on campus, like um, Title IX, Sexual Assault Prevention Committee, or working group where we're teaming up with Greek Life. Um, um, Dean Gateau is on it, Dean Barnett, and we're just thinking of issues to kind of get the message about, um, you know, the Title IX office and what the actual process looks like, kind of demystifying it and um, trying to clear away the stigma of reporting. And then I do interviews and stuff on the side of podcasts. <laughs> so the, the role of president is very, um, you know, you kind of have your class schedule, your meeting schedule, and then your miscellaneous schedules. And, you know, you just really want to dedicate um, your full focus to as many different things as you can because they're all very important in their own ways. Yeah, so treasurer, I'll just keep it short, uh, short yeah. and sweet. Um, I make the budget, I revise the budget, and I approve like every voucher, every allocation, everything goes through my desk um, for clubs, anything like that. Most of my time, I just spend emailing Clubs, clubs email me a ton of questions, so I just respond to them and then approve vouchers, stuff like that. Um, so my position is a little different than Kevin's, but we do share a lot of the common tasks for like emails and um, working with clubs. I serve as the chair of the Probationary Budget Council, um, which is responsible for funding clubs that are newly looking for a budget from USG. 
Um, and I'm also serving as a liaison between clubs and orgs and all of the entities funded by USG. All right. Um, thank you for your answer. That was very informative for me. Um, we're going to take a short music break right now. Welcome back. Um, we're still talking about USG. So our next question is, uh, what are your favorite events on Stony Brook, at Stony Brook? Ooh. Wait, wait, wait. Does this have to be USG events or could it be any event? It could be any event. I would, you know, there, there are a lot of options. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to go with Strawberry Fest. I think that one's just the best one, period. It's the nicest weather. You get a ton of free strawberry, like, things. 
different dishes. I have to go with Wolfie Land. Yeah. Wolfie Land. I was Wolfie thinking Wolfie Land. Brook Fest or Light the Brook. Any of those three? Just because the first we had the first year of Wolfie Land ever starting was our freshman year. And just thinking that. about that event just takes me back to freshman year memories. Everything was new and unexpected. And, you know, the nostalgia effect is just, you can't get rid of it. Yeah. All right. That's a good point for USG funded events. That'd definitely be my favorite. But I don't know. Strawberry Fest is just, it's fire. It is fire. <laughs> Jen, Nancy, did you guys go to Strawberry Fest? I think I, I think I missed it in like my freshman and sophomore years. Like, I don't I think, think I've I ever went. went. Once. Yeah, I, I think, think I went, went once. once. Wow, um, you guys are missing out. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I, feel like I don't know Strawberry Fest. I just mostly remember it lines. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. For it. Or like some. Oh, yeah, I think it was like a swipe or something. Yeah, yeah, it was like a swipe. Middle swipe. For commuters, they have to pay. Wait, how did it go again? Like. <laughs> uh, it's like I, a lot of vendors yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like you had like a card full of like different things you could get and they punch it out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They like hole punch what you get yeah mm -hmm. i just like the weather though yeah the like i'd see a ton of people i know as i went through it yeah but i gotta agree with huntley i think wolfie land that it was real the weather was nice then too and everybody was there i was seeing like people that I saw in freshman year that I haven't talked to, but then magically started talking to at Wolfie Land. Um, <laughs> but a non-USG event, I would have to say. You will showcase too. That one's good. Oh yeah, showcase. Oh. Wait, I changed my answer. I think my second favorite <laughs> <laughs> non-USG event. Wait, is that a USG event? No, right? No, no that's a student yeah. engagement event. Yeah, that would be. That is cold outside, but it's really mm. fun and entertaining. Mm. Yeah. The performances are great. What was your I answer I like the fashion before? shows, too. Those are, what'd you say? No, no. Uh, Nassim, you had, a, you had an answer to before. Um, yeah. I was going to say um, CSA's Relaxathon is really fun. We have, like, masseuses coming in and a bunch of free food. And we also have, like, 15 other clubs that come and table for the event. I think one time at our Relaxathon, we announced the Brook Fest mm -hmm. artist, but then it ended up getting canceled, which was the sad part. Is that the one with the oxygen bar? No. <laughs> oh, what? Really? No, I think that's a different club. I don't know which club had an oxygen bar. I What's thought that was a bar? Relaxathon. I don't know. It's, it's like oxygen. pure oxygen or something. You just inhale it. That's allowed? <laughs> is that, oh, no. yeah, is yeah, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think SEA did it or something something like that. Oh yeah, I, yeah, maybe. Yeah. All these events they, they sound lit. Like I've never heard of yeah. them. I missed out. <laughs> <laughs> like I wish I knew earlier. I would have like definitely gone to a lot of these. Yeah, I feel like I never went to Brookfest. Gotta check the to Cork Brookfest? Fest. True, you get you gotta Brookfest and back to Brook, you know, after are we all seniors on this podcast? I think it's up to yeah. Except for Jennifer. Yeah. Oh. After our sophomore year, you know, that's when the concerts really started taking a um, kind of, you know, a, a downspin. Yeah. I think it so, just got canceled or it's COVID. Yeah, it was canceled or COVID popped up or there was renovations being done. But, oh, oh. And I forgot a favorite event, Homecoming. Homecoming. I love homecoming. I've yeah. never been. I've never homecoming been is great. Senior year, so sad. Do you like uh, homecoming the the game or like <laughs> not the game? Yeah, the game. <laughs> yeah, the homecoming <laughs> game is amazing. The games are always great. Awesome, got it. <laughs> and just what fashion show were you in? Was it CSO? Yeah, so fashion show. That was also a great event. Do you guys have? any like favorite performances or like favorite performers i have a there's a dance group on campus that i really like seeing i think it's i think their name is deja vu on oh campus. they're yeah. really good and i love watching them dance whenever i go to events and there's like a showcase like performance thing and they're there i get really excited 
Shout out to Deja Vu. Yeah. <laughs> I like our uh, break dancing club on campus. I, I The name is slipping me, but I just remember seeing them dancing just randomly in front of a sack plaza once in a while. Oh, and it might be SBU Breaker. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I think for me, it would be the pipettes. I think the pipettes came into a Senate meeting once. And they were just <laughs> yep. right. For me, I gotta say Puso Modern, you know, shout out to my boy mm. Joey. This one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> like. All right. Um, anything else you guys want to share about um, you know, events or performances? The comedy show was good too. The first one yeah. we had. Yeah. yeah. That was really good. I enjoyed that. That was really funny. And I there's a ton of Wait, you could go. And there's a ton of movies they show at Staller. Those are all pretty good too i think a lot of people just don't like make use of it or utilize it what are you gonna say i was gonna say i was surprised he was able to say that much because i saw like faculty members sitting Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but it was so funny i've never seen a movie installer but i always see like their emails and them advertising it maybe i should like take advantage of that before i leave i went to reduce admission what Sorry. I went to one, um, but I was pr- surprised to see it wasn't mostly like students, but like there, there were like a lot of adults mm-hmm. filling the, the audience. But it was a good movie. I really enjoyed it. I think the Sala opens up their uh, ticketing to, you know, just a general community. Mm-hmm. And it's cheaper for um, Stony Brook students if they want to partake in it. Um, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, so this year has been very tough. There's been a lot of difficulties that we've seen and a lot of changes to the U.S. budget this year, USG budget. Um, can you guys uh, share about how this has affected on, uh, what effect this had on SBU or organizations? Yeah, so um, I think since COVID hit last March, um, pretty much club activity really shut down. Um, like for the rest of that academic year. So we were left with a pretty large excess. So when I came in to the position in the fall, it was kind of like, it was just very hard to tackle a lot of the problems that clubs were having. Like there were just a lot of um, COVID related issues that you just couldn't host large scale events. Or if you were doing a virtual event, you just couldn't use your budget. It was like, it was free. So um, just doing like tackling that was pretty difficult, I'd say. And when I went to do fall revisions, um, I actually decided to reduce the student activity fee to $15. Normally it's like $100. Um, So that's like, I think like 83% reduced. I think it's like 99 point something. Um, But yeah, so I reduced it to $15 and that kind of negatively affected clubs because I used our excess to cover their costs, but I still had to cut them by like 53%. This way they would be kind of more able to spend their total budget without having a huge excess in funds. And hopefully it helped students to not be too financially burdened during the pandemic. Um, Are there any questions about that? Like the philosophy we used or (laughs) our motivation for cutting the budgets? Um, I don't really have any questions for it. I mean, I kind of see your uh, the point of view that you guys yeah. like have sense. To, yeah it, like it makes yeah. sense I, I think it was like a good decision on your part mm-hmm. yeah it's just really tough like I know a lot of people like some clubs have some pretty big ideas but it's just like you can't travel you can't host events larger than like what 15 people yeah. I think it's 80 is the max and that's for like staller being outside um, so like with such heavy restrictions kind of makes no sense to have so much money when you can't do anything with it. But yeah, hopefully it opens up next year and we can go back to normal. Yep. Um, so do you guys have any upcoming plans for the rest of the semester? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you can check on our uh, USC Instagram, Stony Brook USC. And uh, we just made an announcement that we... Uh, completed a bid for Kiki Palmer to come speak. 
Um, she, if you don't know Kiki Palmer, she was on True Jackson VP back at Nickelodeon. A lot of us were still in what middle school, high school maybe. And uh, she's just been a tremendous uh, kind of star in the community. Um, we have Raf Regatta still coming up virtually. We're trying to add a kind of in-person component too. I'm not trying to leak too much information because we did sign a confidentiality agreement. Oh, Roth Regatta, I forgot about that for favorite events. That's a great event. Like the Dr. Seuss one? Yeah, that one was all right. You can't say it was all right. Both me and Huntley were on the committee that <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said that. One. Yeah, but uh, those are some of the, the big plans that we have uh, planned for the rest of the semester. I'm going to let Nassim touch on a couple of her plans since I think the clubs would really want to hear this. Okay. And we have two months left. So in my office, I guess right now, um, something that I'm working on my office specifically is making like video tutorials for a lot of the processes that clubs have to go through. Um, for what, like when applying for budgets or specific things to help them out throughout um, this pandemic and like virtual programming and stuff like that. Um, besides that, I'm not really sure what else I'm doing on, in my office yet. I'm still trying to think and reach out to clubs and see what they want me to do and if any of them have ideas for me. Oh, I, I thought I mentioned that earlier, but I might not have. Um, but something that I did this semester was actually promote a new, like a revamped version of what we had before, which was Club of the Week. So it's a monthly application due on the 20th of every month. Um, we pick one club to highlight as our Club of the Month, but we also have honorary mentions. Um, we basically ask clubs to tell us what they've been doing over the past month and what they plan to do in the future. And we just want to get um, the, like their name out there and kind of promote people and their events as well. We know, we definitely know, and I know for myself, like having hosted a virtual workshop that it's really hard to get attendance for a lot of virtual programming. So we also want to promote the events that clubs are hosting and encourage students to go and attend them. Great, yeah, I, I think most of our plans are just for setting up for next year um, and like tying up our loose ends for the initiatives that we started. Um, just because not a lot can be done in a COVID kind of scenario or mm -hmm. scene, I, I don't know what the word is, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's just like setting up for the future and just finishing off a lot of things by the end of the semester. I think to add on to that, I think um, like we personally also had to adapt to this new setting. So I know like um, we are resources for students on campus, but in the beginning, it took us a while to figure out how things were working and running and how we can um, prosper and do well in our positions before we were able to help other students on campus. But I guess, I, guess, I think now we, we definitely have the hang of it and we're just trying to make the most of the time that we have left in office and um, supporting um, the students who will be in office next year. Really yep. focused on uh, transitioning. So that, you know, uh, since we kind of came in on a rocky transition, we want to kind of eliminate that for next year so that everything can get back to, you know, as good as it can get as soon as possible. Yeah, definitely a lot of similarities on that uh, here on China Blue's end as well. So my next question for you guys, for students that are interested in the undergraduate student government, uh, what, are, what are some advice that you would give them to be successful? I would say definitely try to get out to a Senate meeting, a USG event. Um, just if, you, if you're feeling any kind of hesitation and you know that you do have an interest in just you know, Stony Brook University as a whole, or you have your own individual interests in um, student government, or you just have an idea, or you see a problem that you believe that you can find a solution to just take the first step, try to get in contact with someone from USC, 
Um, everyone is so nice. Everyone's definitely willing because no one would be here if someone else didn't really uh, bring them in and kind of have that open door policy. And, you know, I, I'm even willing to help anybody who um, who's interested in USG, kind of giving them a rundown. And, you know, that's, that's about all the advice I can give. Yeah, just show up. Come, <laughs> come through to our meetings. Yeah. See what it's all about. Get involved. Same for China Blue here. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think also, um, I would say, even if you might not want to run in an election, there are other positions in USG that we post on Handshake a lot. So just keeping an eye out over there. Um, we hire for our elections board, our AV staff, as well as the assistants for all of our offices through Handshake. Um, but besides that, I know that it may be intimidating to, um, to join and kind of like put yourself out there if you don't know anybody in USG, but I can definitely assure all of you that we are really welcoming and we were in the same positions as you. Like when I was a freshman, I was really scared um, but I had somebody who was older than me that was in USG that really helped me and guided me throughout the process of becoming involved. And I know that people this year and in the future will be willing to do the same for other students on campus. All right. Uh, thank you for answering these questions for us. Um, we're going to take a quick music break again.
and there was a, one more thing that I kind of wanted to touch on. So if we can finesse a question in there. Um, USC is currently trying to get um, incorporation. Uh, we're trying to become an incorporated entity. And the, pretty much the one reason why we're doing this is to kind of get a personal liability for the um, next CEO, I, I mean, the next president and treasurer of USC because they kind of function as a, the CEO and CFO of the organization. And currently right now, if um, God forbid something is to happen and USG is sued, me and Kevin can directly also get sued. So we need to put that to a vote for the student body. And we're hoping that we can get enough students to um, be aware enough to vote yes, because there's really no downside to it. Just to protect yourselves. And yeah. yeah, and just to protect the future. Um, whoever, whatever student, you know, kind of wants to hold um, those two positions that they know that they'll be protected. And a little backstory. Um, USG used to be Polity. It's like other organization. Polity was incorporated and then they dissolved and USG was made and USG was never incorporated. And it's kind of like standard for a lot of 501c3s um, or like not-for-profit organizations to be incorporated. Like uh, I think Albany, Binghamton, they're all incorporated. Like they're two governments. And I think Crew Club is also incorporated. Like some clubs are incorporated. That's a good point though, Huntley. We actually have one question. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But do you guys get slash understand what the student activities fee is? Because I feel like some students don't get it. So maybe that would be interesting to talk about as well. Do you three? Know what it is. As far as I understand it, um, USG fee goes towards um, campus events, campus clubs, and anything that serves like the student body. Uh, awesome! Yeah, they know. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't gotta go over. It. All right, thank you, Huntley, Kevin, and Nassim for coming out today to speak on our podcast about undergraduate student government at Stony Brook University. Uh, is there anything, any last things that you guys want to? share to the audience? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to share. Um, first of all, I wanted to say thank you for um, inviting us and having us uh, to speak with you guys. It was very fun. I had a great time. And that um, just a heads up for the students. Uh, we are in election timeline. And um, so you wish the elections are going on. And on the ballot, we also have a vote for incorporation. And this is to get USG, the undergraduate student government kind of incorporated to have a personal liability protection so that if any student wants to run for president or treasurer, they can do so without getting the, without having the fear of getting sued. And um, I also want to say stay positive, test negative, spread love, not hate. And come to Kiki Palmer. Come yeah. Kiki Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you guys for tuning in to China Blues Podcast on WSB 90.1 FM. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay, the delayed bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Stop playing this moment. Yeah. Let me stay with you forever. Forever. Stop playing this moment. This moment. I swear to God, made the bomb. My heart only for you. Before the kids smell forever on you. Everybody talking about me, I think they're about to fall in. Listen, Jenny, the moon will be with Sonny. Fun shot, shit, the door to down, you and me. Fun job, baby, we don't need any of this shit. We're just curly. Love my everyday, the shedding. Curly. I'm what the Audi A for playlist. Don't worry, bro, your life, yeah, look at me now. You got it, spend it, huh? Stop tying this moment.我都是天亮了才睡我开始要失败不管这世界变得多么快
去猜，不用去猜。不浪费时间去猜测我未来会碰到的麻烦或惊喜，虽然也常会有问号跟感叹号出现，但不让它留在我心里。曾经我为了去武装我自己，很快就学会了冷漠和脏话。现在我不想再装，我只想更爽快，想悠然的活在这当下。时间又不会为我赖着不走，干嘛停下来为了选择头疼？我的心目标就在下个路口。现在要做的就是加点油门。当我穿过拥挤的人群，穿过低谷时被冲洗的人情，感谢所有为我亮起的灯，在我丧气的时候总是仗义的过来安我们。能不会在，让那时候为我开始。要是歪，该不该？还没来的不想猜，谁能真的看得清楚？哪里是归宿？要怎么做未来的拼图？现在我还没一定不知道。能不会在，让那时候为我开始。要是歪，该不该？还没来的不想猜，谁能真的看得清楚？哪里是归宿？
惩罚。